Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in Unit 5, Analytical Applications of Differentiation. Today's topic is 5.10, which is an introduction to optimization problems. Enjoy today's notes. 10, the introduction to optimization. So this is going to be the first of two lessons. Uh, 5.11 is going to get into uh, how to solve optimization problems. Today we're going to focus on just how to set these problems up. Now first off, let's talk about what optimization is. To optimize something means to make the best or most effective use of a situation or resource. There are tons and tons and tons of real-world applications related to optimization. You know, maybe you have a company, maybe you're trying to figure out, you're selling a product and you're trying to figure out how do you make the most money based on some different constraints. Maybe you're trying to figure out how to use the least amount of material. Generally, you know, you, you know, if you are, if you own a company or you're working uh, for a company, uh, you want to try to you know maximize things, and so optimization is a huge, huge, huge uh, opportunity for that that we can use calculus in order to figure that out. So first, uh, let's talk about strategies for solving optimization problems. So the first, in general, is uh, very similar to related rates back in the last chapter. Uh, we would say draw a picture if applicable and identify known and unknown quantities. Second, you're going to try to write an equation model that will be optimized. So what is what are you trying to optimize? What equation could you uh, write in order to make that happen? Third, write your equation in terms of a single variable. So in terms of a single variable, that is a key piece. Now, for the sake of today and for 5.10, we're going to go over these topics. So how you do the first three parts. The second uh, two, four and five, um, not second two, but four and five, we're going to be going over in 5.11. Those are determining the desired max or min value with calculus techniques, then determining the domain endpoints of your equation to verify if the endpoints represent a maximum or a minimum. Um, so again, the idea for today is we're not going to be solving any of these problems. We're just setting up, uh, you know, we're just setting up these problems to, to go along. So let's uh, let's try it. So number one, uh, find two numbers whose sum is 30 and whose product is as large as possible. So we, we have two sort of constraints, right? We, we've got two numbers whose sum is 30, but whose product is as large as possible. So the thing that we're trying to optimize, so we want to optimize the product, right? That's that's what we want to be as large as possible, the product. So if we have two arbitrary numbers, we'll call that product, I'm gonna call it P. P is gonna equal the, the product of those two numbers, so X times our Y. And this is what we want to optimize. Now our other constraints that we have is we know that the two numbers have to sum up to 30. So sum means to add, so X plus Y, has to be equal to 30. Now in general, we've, uh, you know, there's no picture for this particular one, but we've identified uh, known and unknown quantities. We're uh, writing an equation model that's gonna be optimized. And then now the goal is to write our equation in terms of a single variable. So in this case, you know, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna try to essentially combine these two equations. I'm gonna get y by itself, and we're gonna say that y is equal to 30 minus x. And then I'm going to take that p is equal to x times y, and we're gonna substitute in for y. So p is gonna equal x times 30 minus x, which means that our uh, p equation, our, our product equation, is gonna be equal to uh, 30x minus x squared. Um, and so this is our equation written as a single variable. Uh, it is now set up for step four and step five in terms of how we would use this then to find the maximum uh, product. Uh, but we're gonna get into that more again in the next lesson. Today is all about setting up these problems so that we can we can use calculus on it. So none of this was calculus. You know, we're essentially doing like systems of equations almost uh, for this. Um, so let's let's get into number two. What point on the graph uh, y equals the square root of x? So we've got this picture over here. 
uh, this radical function, is closest to 5 comma 0. So here's my 5 comma 0. What, what point on this uh, curve is the closest? You know, maybe we're saying it's somewhere over here, but how could we find out the exact point uh, where that is? Um, in order to, uh, to do this, um, I want to remind you of a formula probably from Algebra 1 or Geometry, uh, which is the distance formula. So the distance formula which if you're trying to find the distance between two points, which I'll say x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2, uh, is that the distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. So this is our distance formula, which again is from Algebra 1 and geometry. Uh, essentially, this is, this is essentially the Pythagorean theorem with coordinates, where you're finding the distance uh, between the legs and then squaring it, and yeah. So in this case, if we're going to use that formula, we know that uh, one of the points that we're going to be using is 5 comma 0. And we don't know what the other point is, so I'm going to essentially call it x comma y. And so if we plug in into to this equation here, we, we can say that the distance, d, is going to be equal to the square root of, let's say, uh, so the x minus 5 squared plus y minus 0 squared. And so that means that d is going to be equal to the square root of x minus 5 quantity squared. Here, if we subtract 0, it's still y. And then if we square it, we've got then this plus y squared here. Um, in this case, though, again, you know, thinking about what, what we've got here for our strategy, the end goal is we want to write this as a single variable. And right now I've got x's and y's on one side. So I'm just going to remember the fact here that y is equal to the square root of x. And we're going to substitute that in for our y right here. So d then is going to be equal to the square root of x minus 5 quantity squared plus the square root of x squared so that y became the square root of x, and that means that our squared and our square root are going to cancel. So that means that that's going to equal the square root of x minus 5 quantity squared plus x. Now we could go further and maybe you know square this and, and combine our like terms, uh, but for the sake of uh, today, I'm going to just leave this right here. This is going to be our expression uh, that's going to be for the equation, rather, for uh, d in this problem. Again, no calculus has been used really just uh, yet. Now this is set up for that optimization in that 5.11 lesson. All right, number three, Mr. Kelly needs to make an open top box to store all of his magic cards. Yes, magic cards. Uh, he has a piece of cardboard that is 14 by 30 inches. To do this, Mr. Kelly cuts out squares of equal size from the four corners of the uh, four sides. So the four sides can be bent upwards. Uh, what size should the squares be in order to create a box with the largest possible volume? So this is a this is a classic uh, style problem, right? You have a a limited uh, sized piece of cardboard, and you want to make the largest possible volume, right? So we have a certain size piece of cardboard. How do you make the biggest box that has the largest volume? Um, this is a this is an activity that you know lots of uh, students do either in grade school or maybe in geometry class. But you know if you've got your rectangular piece of paper or rectangular piece of cardboard the idea here is that you're cutting out squares out of each corner so you're cutting out squares and let's call the side length of each of these squares x so taking uh cutting out something of the same length out of each corner we'll just say it's length of x then what you do is you take the remaining pieces and you fold up these little flaps and this little rect uh, red rectangle that I've got here, it ends up being the base of the uh, base of the shape. And then we fold up each of these sides so that it's standing up and making this three-dimensional box. Now, in this case, it wouldn't have a lid, uh, but it would have you know all of the other sides uh, if we folded it up and um, and taped it, you know, taped it or glued it or however you wanted to to attach it. Um, so, how do we figure out the largest possible volume? We know in general that volume of a three-dimensional, you know, uh, rectangular prism uh, is going to be the length times the width times the height. 
Now, we also know that we started out with this 14 by 30 uh, piece of uh, cardboard. So I'll call our long end here 30. We'll call our short end here 14. Now, what does that mean about the, the pieces that we've got, uh, essentially the base of this, this shape, three-dimensional object that's gonna be created? Well, if this whole side length here is 30, and we cut off one X and two X's here, we could call the length of this, uh, of the bottom of this uh, box, 30 minus two X. Similarly, if this whole side length here is 14 and we took an X away and another X away, we could call the width of this box uh, 14 minus two X. And the height of the box, since the square is x uh, is, is, is has a length of x, uh, that's going to be the height of the box because that's the part that we're going to be folding up. So the uh, height is going to be x in this case. So just substituting into our equation that we've got over here, the volume then is going to be equal to the length, which we said it can be represented by 30 minus 2x, times the width, which is 14 minus 2x, times the height, which again is gonna be x. Which again, we can multiply, we could distribute, we could do a bunch of stuff to, to change this equation, but for right now, I'm gonna leave this right here uh, and it's ready for the next lesson when we can do some calculus on it and optimize it to find that largest possible volume. Number four, two towers are 30 feet apart. So let's, uh, let's draw this out. So we've got some ground, we've got a tower, we've got another tower. Uh, generally, you know, buildings are perpendicular to the ground, so I'm going to uh, add those little perpendicular symbols to the ground. And we know that they're 30 feet apart. One is 12 feet high. The other is 20 feet high. There is a stake in the ground between the two towers, so we don't know where it is, so I'll just put it maybe right there. Uh, the top of each tower is a wire tied to it that connects to the stake on the ground. So we've got one that's going here, one that's going here. Uh, let's see, where should the stake be placed? So we could move, potentially move the stake in either direction along the ground. Uh, where should the stake be placed to use the least amount of wire? Interesting. So we're trying to minimize this particular problem. Uh, and what are we trying to minimize? Well, we're trying to minimize the hypotenuse of each of these triangles, or not each, but the sum of the hypotenuse. Um, and so I'm gonna call this A, and I'm gonna call this B over here. Um, in order to set this up, we know that this whole distance is 30, right, from, from uh, this tower to this tower. Um, I'm gonna call the distance from uh, the 12 foot tower to, to the stake, I'm gonna call that X, which means if this from here to here is X and the whole thing is 30, that means that this part over here is gonna be 30 minus X. It's gonna be 30 minus X for that. And because uh, these towers are perpendicular to the ground, we've got uh, essentially two right triangles. Two right triangles. We're trying to minimize the, the, uh, the distance of A minus B. So I'm trying to minimize Uh, or at not a minus b, but the sum of those two values. So a plus b. Uh, that is the goal here. But I need to get, I have too many variables. I need to get them all in terms of one variable. Now, in this case, because we have right triangles, I can, I can do the Pythagorean theorem here to set this up. Uh, and I can say that for this triangle here on the left, that 12 plus, uh, 12 squared plus x squared is gonna equal a squared, which means that a is equal to the square root of 12 squared plus x squared. And in our triangle here on the right side, we could say that 30 minus x quantity squared plus 28 squared is gonna equal b squared, which means that b is equal to the square root of 30 minus x quantity squared plus 28 quantity squared. Now to finish setting up this problem, again, we're trying to minimize the distance of A plus B. So 
since I have an expression here for uh, A and another one for B, I'm gonna substitute both of those into this equation here. Uh, and we're gonna get that D is equal to the square root of 12 squared plus X squared plus the square root of 30 minus X quantity squared plus 28 squared. This now is set up uh, where the distance is being represented by only one variable, right? It's all X's now. Uh, there's no A's, there's no B's. Um, and so we're set up and we're ready to be able to do our optimization uh, with calculus in lesson 5.11. Uh, but that is it for today. Uh, we've got practice, uh, and as usual, the solutions are posted. Uh, come on by class and come on by office hours. Let me know if you've got any questions, and good luck on your mastery check. Have a great day.